we looked at uh, two statements from the Vedas. We are looking at Asatoma Sadgamaya and as you know the last line in that thing is Mrityorma Amritam Gamaya. Mrityorma Amritam Gamaya has been at least I have seen translations to say that take me from death to immortality. And when we contemplate on that statement, actually, it, at least to me, it doesn't make that much sense because I don't think any of us truly expect to be immortal and so knowing fully well that all of us have to die someday when we say when we translate it to say take me from death to immortality um, it somehow seems like i'm missing something when i look at that statement mrityor mamrutam gamaya untranslated like that just doesn't seem to make much sense right so today i would like to share some thoughts so that that all the three lines we complete that whole thing in the first place if you look at each of those um, words mrutya Gamaya, we can say, okay, take me there. That Even that can be expanded upon, but at least suppose we say that, okay, take me from here to there. The qu question is, what is here and what is there, right? If you say death to immortality, well, like I said, it doesn't make sense to me that much. But if you look at the word mrutya, and I look at the word amrita, mrutya, is the change of form and therefore because mrityu means change of form death too is change of form for the jiva you appear one way in a particular body and then you're going to appear another way in some other body so it's change of form change of physical form so because it's change of physical form mrityu can also mean death as it's called in english but mrityu means much more than that if you just say that it's just change of form it need not be just change of physical form it's just change of form mrityu doesn't say change of physical form just change of form if you happen to apply it to change of physical form we are only looking at a small part of the meaning of that actual word amrita Again, if you say immortal, you know, it's a word, that's like, I, I don't know what that means, right? You say immortal, what is immortal? It's immortality, you say, okay, fine, whatever. <laughs> yeah. So if we looking at a mruta, that basically means something that doesn't change form, right? So question is that if I look at myself I say how can I how can I say a prayer to God and say that hey take me from something that is changing form to something that does not change form Mrityurma Amritam Gamaya so there's change of form here no change of form here right so I'm just saying hey please take me from here to there right I'll share with you my thoughts on that. Well, I'll share some thoughts with you on that. The first thing is, if I look at myself, um, obviously, 
the part that I see, actually physically see, is my physical body. And when I look at that physical body, that physical body can also be called Mrutya. Here's the reason why. You know that the cells, like you look at your skin, right? They're constantly dying, right? I'm not constantly dying, but those things are constantly dying, right? And even in your brain, you know, you got billions and billions of cells. Some of them are going, every second it's going, right? So what that means is that the form, the physical form, is constantly changing. Every split second it is changing. I may not notice that, you know, I, I, may, not, I may be incapable of noticing that micro change, but it is changing. We, we all know that. Like if I look at myself in the mirror two years from now, I look a little older, right? I mean, we all know that. So we are constantly changing from, from the moment we are born until the moment we are gone. We are constantly changing form. So Mrityu, the Mrityu part of me is the physical body because it is constantly changing. It's not constantly dying. It's constantly changing form, right? You cannot, so if you just forget about this death and immortality business, just forget about those two words. Don't think in terms of those words at all, right? If I only look, and look at it in terms of change and no change. It makes heck of a lot more sense, okay? So if I say that, take me from that part which is changing to that part which is unchanging, my problem is that I tend to identify myself almost exclusively with my physical body. That is a problem, right? So you say, hey, you're looking good. I, somebody says, hey, you're looking good. I, I assume that they mean that I'm physically looking good, right? <laughs> Nobody thinks, that, you're looking good, say, oh, thank you. you know, I've been exercising, I've been, I've been on a diet. You know, <laughs> Nobody says, I've been, oh, I've been doing meditation, that's why I look good. <laughs> Nobody says that. Everybody, I mean, you're, you're, this is more, you know, this is attachment to the body. Okay. And you need to have that. You may say, why, why is it like that? Why do we even do that? Right. Because, we are made that way for sake of survival. Like if you if you have no attachment to your body at all, if anything happens, you're not going to take care of that, right? You, you'll pay no attention to your physical health. You, you don't care what you eat. You don't care what you do. And you just mess it up, right? So just so that you will take care of something that has been given to you, if, if you identify with... Some, I'll give you an example, okay? Uh, there are some people who love cars, okay? They just love cars, and, you know? And so the moment they start making some good money, get a job, you know, whatever, start making some good money, the first thing they do, first thing, okay, is to go buy a fancy car, right? Even before they do anything else, they don't care where they live, but they need a fancy car. The reason for this, so you say, okay, why is that? Because it just needs, if you're just looking for transportation, you're not going to spend $50,000. There's no way. That's idiotic, right? Because for fifteen twenty thousand dollars $20,000, you can get totally reliable transportation. Why would you spend $50,000 on the thing? Because you are identifying with that thing. So you're identifying, so people should look at that and say, so-and-so is the driver and the owner of that car. And therefore, some value is attached to the person who owns that, right? So, who's, whomsoever may own that car and whomsoever may be driving that car, that person gets value because of the car, right? And therefore, you put money in that. You're willing to pay crazy amounts of money for that thing, just so that you can say, oh, I don't want people to look at me and say I'm driving some silly car, right? Then people may think that, oh, that means I'm not successful. They may, God knows what they will think of me. On the other hand, if I would drive a fancy car, immediately they say, oh, so this guy is successful, no, because he's driving a fancy So my 
image my my image to the outside world if i'm projecting through a vehicle then i would like for that vehicle to be good isn't it similarly this is also a vehicle <laughs> it is taking me it's given to me just like the car you may have 5 or 10 years this you may have like 50 to 100 years okay <laughs> that's it you just have it another 10 times more it also takes you somewhere it also does something right so when i start identifying myself with that thing i start thinking that i am that and that is me right so i realize that that thing i feel sad because i look at it and i say oh my god i'm changing i am getting older you are not getting older your body is getting older like if my car gets a dent i didn't get a dent hopefully <laughs> you may get that too right <laughs> hopefully i didn't get the dent it's the car that got the dent like i can look at it and say eh, whatever okay it's a stupid car you know i have nothing to do with it you know it gets a dent it gets a dent right but you know how people feel very sad you feel very sad you know some tiny scratch and oh my god my car got a scratch you know this is a car got a scratch you didn't get a scratch why the hell are you what it will still take you wherever you want to go right it's it, it is not change at all it doesn't look as nice as it used to similarly the body doesn't look as it nice as it used to perhaps and so i feel sad because i say oh i'm changing i'm getting older my body is changing my body doesn't look good this always any time you attach yourself to something that is constantly changing you are bound to feel sad because you cannot stop that change right so if that is mrutya and i attach myself to that so strongly my identity my whole being everything i attach to that right so when i when i say a prayer to bhagavanta and say mrutyorma amrutam gamaya if you think about it the next level right we'll skip the pranamaya kosha if you go to the mind the mental plane right your mind the question is is my mind also getting old or not like is my mind today 10 years older than what it was when i was 55 or not it depends it doesn't have to be you see, you see there are people who are so so attached to the body right that as as the body gets older i'm not saying you get older as the body gets older the mind also feels older like you just said there you know just uh, say why are you sitting like that you say oh, i'm an old man you know your body is old your mind doesn't have to be old well, why the heck should it you know your mind if you keep it in good shape you know because we don't identify with that see the body if you want to keep it in good shape you need to diet isn't it you need to do some you know you cannot just eat whatever crap you want and you need to exercise right so if i want to keep the mind young which is much easier actually than the body because the body is constantly changing the mind does not have to change from that that much the body has no choice there's nothing you can exercise all you want okay and yeah i mean we should keep it in as good a shape just like the car it doesn't mean that you know uh, if you if you go to some uh, go to wegmans or something you know leave your car there in the parking lot right we make sure that we're not going to park it like 2 inches from the next car right we don't want to do that why because somebody is going to bang into that thing you know that so you may take some precaution to make sure that that what changes does not get damaged that's one thing but you do know that it is going to get older it is going to change from there's nothing you can do even your car the car will get older there's nothing you can do about that right there's no way because the wear and tear is there on the car it's a physical thing anything physical there'll be wear and tear 
and therefore it will change form. There's nothing you can do about that at all. Right? So the mind on the other hand, if I were to exercise that, so to speak, and if I were to diet what I feed to that, right? See, our problem is because I cannot, if I don't identify myself with my mental faculties, because I don't identify, right? And therefore, and you cannot see it. See, other thing is you cannot, like you cannot go to the mirror and see that, right? And because I cannot do that, then you say, eh, I can, it can eat whatever it wants. It can feed whatever. The mind can, you let it, you know, when I say eat, what I mean is that ideas and stuff like that. After all, what is it that comes to the mind? Well, whatever comes through your pancha jnanendriyas, right? Like what you see, what you feel, what you touch, what you eat, you know, what you taste rather, not so much what you eat. All these five senses, you say that, eh, let it <laughs> get what, touch whatever you want, see whatever you want, smell whatever you want. But the thing is, just like the body, if you feed it whatever heck you want, right, it gets into trouble. The mind gets into trouble too, is doesn't it? It has to. I mean, it's common sense. You don't need to know any Sanskrit for this. It's just common sense, right? So if I were to watch what I feed to the mind, a little bit of diet or what I feed, right? And secondly, I need to exercise that also, right? I cannot... It's like if I just sit on the couch and become a couch potato, you know, I, I don't just sit there and watch TV all day long or do some random thing like that. You know, you get in trouble. Similarly, the mind, if you just let it sit there, so to speak, and just, you know, occupy itself. See, you may say that even physically, like if I sit on that couch and watch TV, you say, no, I'm doing something. My body is doing something. So what is your body doing? It is sitting here and it is watching TV. It's doing something. You won't call that exercise, do you? No. You, when you do something stressful and when you actually exercise all the muscles in your body, all the joints in your body is what we call it. Similarly, the mind, just it's sitting there, just, you know, whatever comes, you know, <laughs> just looking at that is not exercising the mind. Exercising the mind, just like physical exercise, is in a disciplined way, making it do something which is a little stressful. It is a little stressful. But it is stress for a good thing. Just like when you exercise, yeah, it may ache a little bit and all that, but you feel good, don't you? So really the mind also, if you exercise the mind properly, after, yeah, it hurts a little bit and all that, but after that, it, you feel good, right? This is what we call manana. The excess, the exercise, daily exercise for the mind is manana, right? Contemplation. Then the question is this, right? Okay, so physically, let's say I want to exercise, you know, physically. You know, I can do so many things, right? I can walk, I can run, I can, you know, I can do so many things. I can do walk on a treadmill, I can elliptical, whatever stuff. There's so many things you can do, right? You have, you have to ask yourself, okay, so... What is the best exercise? What is the best thing? Well, I'm told, I'm no expert on this, but I'm told that of all the things really, the best thing is what nature made you to do, which is walk a lot. More than anything else, I don't care what anybody says. Walking, you're meant to walk and walking is the, that's what people say, I don't know. Like I said, I'm no expert on this. Then you have to ask yourself, what is the mind meant to do? <laughs> right? What, you can do so many things with it, but what is it meant to What did nature or God design it for? Right? You know what it designed for? Two things. One is sensor integration. Okay? Like all robotics. So you get all this sensory information. Right? And you have to integrate all these things. You, you cannot... A robot is a, well, the robot cannot be intelligent or stupid, but the guy who designed it can be intelligent or stupid. If you get each, sen you know, from sensors in the robot, you get like the vision from the camera, you get the image, right? And then you have a tactile sensor. And you don't mix those two things, okay? <laughs> What's the point? 
there's no point in that right the only when you integrate the sensory information is when it has value because one is complementing the other right so what i see what i touch what i feel uh, i keep on saying feel what i hear you know all of these things if they complement each other that is one thing the mind is supposed to do integrate these things together all the sensory data there's a second thing the second thing is to ask questions so you know say manana manana when i say contemplate it's not asking random questions that's that's not manana right when i say ask questions it's not like the moment you say something you know i say what so I, i you had no chance to think about what you just heard right you had no chance at all immediately you want to ask a question right that is not manana manana is giving it time you give it time it has to sink in right i use the example of the plants all the time so you you pour water on the plant right <laughs> well the thing is that there's no point in that actually the water has to seep through the ground get to the roots the roots have to absorb that that's the only way plant the roots have to absorb that and it, it has to send it up inside the plant water on the plant is no use water in the plant is good right the mind is the same way manana is allowing the mind giving it time it let it go through let it go to the roots let it go to the roots in your mind right it has to absorb that in and it has to send it up inside you not outside you yeah so if you do that, suppose suppose i do those that's what it's meant to do by the way that's why it's there it's fully capable of doing that like just in the plant the root is fully capable of absorbing the water but if you don't even let the water get there you know it's not the plant's fault right the plant is totally fine it's well designed it's just that you are not allowing the water to get there right if the water evaporates it falls on the leaves and it just evaporates the plant is going to die similarly any information that comes to me and it's all that's all it is just information it's not knowledge often times you get confused between the two but the information that comes to me the way it gets turned into knowledge is through manana which means that it has to seep in first allow it to seep in if you don't even give it a chance to go inside you there is no question of it becoming a part of you there is no way it can feed all the things inside you for a useful purpose right so manana contemplation right is a two step process the first step is to allow it to soak in let it soak let it come in and then it has to send up isn't it the like the plant the the system is designed to do that <laughs> you don't have to you don't have to pull the water up in the plant it's the system is designed if it goes to the root it will come up even though it's against gravity by the way it will come up right it will feed into the leaves and the branches and all that. similarly in the mind it's designed like that right it's this it's naturally this, you don't have to do anything it's not like you have to you know with some great effort you have to do this or something it it's designed to do that so if you allow it to soak in then that elevation of that knowledge if you will because now it is turning into knowledge the information is turning into knowledge right so question is how, how how does it what is the natural process that pushes it up inside you the thing is asking questions not asking questions to somebody else not googling something not going to wikipedia you have to ask yourself the question like if i say something i may be a idiot and say all kinds of wrong things how do you know that i'm not a idiot yeah maybe a totally idiot right and i may say stupid things totally crazy stupid things how do you know that i'm not doing that you cannot just take it at face value you, you cannot do that that's not manana 
that's not knowledge that's just information you know i can sit here and say all kinds of random things right and you can say oh okay oh he says it nicely very nice then so you yeah, what very nice it, it didn't do you any good on the other hand if you raise questions on that valid questions not questions for the sake of asking questions but actually saying that is that true does it make sense what, what how about my experiences in life my own experiences in life does it gel with what this guy is saying or not maybe it does maybe it doesn't now just because you don't have experience doesn't mean that it's not true uh, right now as i speak you know that 3 minutes archer is going to start a, a thing somewhere in houston you know one of his i have to quote him on this one um like i said so many times in my professionals before some of his quotations are awesome you know they it's they're really really nice and um i'd heard him say once that you cannot use your lack of experience to deny my experience think about that you cannot use your lack of experience to deny my experience she cannot say no that's not possible you couldn't have this couldn't have happened in no way i say why because it never happened to me <laughs> so what kind of logic is that <laughs> so you think is well you should also if you like that experience and you never had it try you know maybe someday you'll have it too whatever it may be right if it's worthy of pursuing maybe it like you'll get it too this information turning into knowledge through this questioning process right is manana now if you do these two things the mind will stay young going back to i'm trying hard to get back on track here going back to mrityor ma amrutam gamaya at the first level at the first level the prayer to me means hey take me my identification with my body it is my body is not me it's my body let me at least at the very least take me from there towards my mind because the mind is little bit more amrita than the body the body every day it's getting messed up every day it's changing but my mind is not changing that much right as a matter of fact if you keep it in good shape it can stay pretty steady actually all the things all the adhyatma the spirituality and all these things they talk about is basically to keep the mind from changing that's what it is right you don't the mind doesn't have to get old you know even in english they say all this is you're only as old as you feel and whatever that's what they mean at least there is the acceptance that in every culture there's the acceptance that it is possible to keep the mind from getting old right that means that it's little bit amrita it doesn't have to change as much the body there's nothing you can do okay there's nothing i can do right and people feel so sad about this as oh my god i'm you know in your 30 years something as oh my god i'm becoming old i'm 30 years old well somebody who is 60 years old will look at you oh, what are you talking about <laughs> you know so it's all relative but but the thing is that you cannot prevent that it's it's not preventable the mind is little bit preventable you could make it little bit less changeable that means that it is little bit more amrita than the body so when i say take me from amrita to amrita i'm saying hey bhagwan take me from identification with my body at least towards the mind at least let me at least identify with my mind let me let me try to keep my mind looking good not so much my body right it doesn't mean for example you know like if you have a car we use the same example right it doesn't mean you should never wash your car you say it's a stupid car you know it's just not it doesn't matter if it's dirty i never vacuum it i never wash it you don't want to live in dirty surroundings right i mean you feel bad if your car is all 
never washed and there's crap inside you know you don't feel good when you go on the other end you have a clean car you know well vacuumed and a nice wash it on but you don't have to go crazy about that right because it's going to get old anyway so similarly body is not that you should not keep the body in good shape but over identification with that is mruta instead of that let me go at least identify with my mind okay so instead of identification of me with my action let me at least identify myself with my thought that people cannot see so you know why we don't do that people cannot see that. i i can be a nasty person thinking bad thoughts and my thing is that nobody will know that or on the contrary I I may have nothing but the best thoughts towards you. You don't know that either. Right? Either way you don't know. At least that's my assumption. Either way I don't you don't know and if you don't know how will I get credit for that? I don't want discredit. Like even if I think very nasty thoughts I don't want discredit. Say so you won't know. It's okay. I can so I can say nice things but think nasty things. thing and they won't know how my question i i ask people this all the time how do you know i don't know how do you know that i don't i mean maybe i don't <laughs> that's not the point but how do you know that i don't know you don't know that i may very well know what you're thinking right you don't have to say something you know to do something i may know exactly what you're thinking how do you know that i don't know that no if we say that oh my god you mean you really know what i'm thinking i suppose i say yep not only me all these people know that they say oh crap i better try but to think good things because they all know you know now you're exposing yourself right is oh, damn it. i i i better <laughs> watch what i think okay right this assumption that people don't know which is not true actually not totally true at least people know they they can feel man they know like if if i'm sitting here constantly thinking bad things about you yeah people know they feel it they know that they may not know exactly what you're thinking but they have some idea right intuitively they know right so the moment i know that oh it's exposed man just like they can look at my physical body they can look at my thoughts too all the time so suppose people could do that can you imagine how careful we would be can you imagine how nice looking we want it to be so when i say do you know how your life will change if only you did that suppose i say you know if i think that my mind i want my mind to be totally transparent i want everybody to see what i'm thinking whether they do or not is basically let me assume i want to live my life assuming that everybody can see through me and know exactly what i'm thinking that's what i want because if if i if i'm transparent i'm going to watch out <laughs> i am going to be very careful so when i say mrityur ma amrutam gamiya i'm saying a prayer to god and saying hey krishna at least if not anything just one this is just one step that's all there is long ways to go at least take me to at least take me to that thing where on a daily basis let me assume that everybody knows what i'm thinking let me live such that let my life be such that let me think those things such that everybody can see what i'm thinking all the time that is amruta that is amruta man right can you imagine how how much improvement there will be in my life if i did that so mrityor ma amritam gamaya these are just my thoughts you don't have to 
like i said do manana man you don't have to agree with anything i say okay and you may walk away tomorrow and say that's all crap okay <laughs> fine i know i don't care if that's fine with me i'm just sharing you my thoughts that's all right you do manana and you form your own thoughts okay <laughs> don't, don't you think for yourself why why the heck should i give you my thoughts okay i can share my thoughts with you but you can develop you have to develop your own thoughts based on that these are only catalysts that's all it is okay? whatever then you say okay is that it so suppose i do this that statement is over no not yet because if i go like i said in the koshas i skipped one and i we can talk about that's little bit look the reason i skip pranamaya kosha is that that's energy and that's a lot more difficult to explain not, not that i cannot explain it i like to talk about just that for about 5 days so i just skip that that's because thinking men mind and all that everybody understands so that that's why i skip from body to mind to straight away right okay so there's annamaya kosha there's pranamaya kosha manomaya kosha so if my identification okay i'll say this very briefly okay before we go to the mind the, just a 10 second thing mrityorma amritam gameya if i identify myself with the type of energy that i have so where i go you know i tell you guys you know that you walk into my office you should feel good even if i don't even if i yell at you sometimes i do right students know they come and you say no go away you know? <laughs> they'll still feel good they'll say i mean he, he yells nicely you know? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say that and but <laughs> but this the energy we're talking about so my thing is let me identify mrityorma amritam gamya my energy man let that energy be good suppose you can all see what type of energy i'm giving you i'm going to watch out a little bit <laughs> right say <laughs> what energy you don't know what now i can bring the worst energy in the world i walk in somewhere i bring horrible energy you don't know that you, you know the effect of that but you don't connect the two right so that's why that's a very that's a somewhat difficult thing thought process of people understand at least then it's easier to understand so you went from identification with annamaya kosha to pranamaya kosha manomaya kosha then we come to vijnanamaya kosha that's the next layer vijnanamaya kosha right this vijnanamaya kosha is a little bit tougher that is you know if i go to my chitta the question is this rain amrita to amrita here's the thing uh, you know what an integrator is right okay so if if i okay take a function and i integrate that suppose i am integrating from zero to infinity right so i take a function so what does that mean you it's like area under the curve right so you just keep adding the area under the curve uh okay i'll get, go away from mathematics in a second but as you integrate you know what happens it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger right say so any small change suppose i have a monotonous function okay that means going up all the time function okay and then suddenly it comes down a little bit just a little bit it comes down when i'm integrating let's say the sum suppose i'm adding uh, a function is x plus 1 or something you know you just add one each time so i started with a one so I, from one i take away if i subtract one it becomes zero right suppose i've gone up to 10000 now i take away one it's still roughly 10000 right makes sense so if you your chitta is sort of like an integrator right one way of looking at it is it is integrating all your experiences in every single janma and keeping it there so if i go from mrita to amrita if i can go to that level right 
here are the experiences from minus infinity <laughs> from long 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 time back right so you're not going to change that much i mean things can happen whatever happens outside happens man whatever good bad and the ugly it all happens outside right my rate I'm, i'm constant you know why it's like the integrator you know you take away one from 1 trillion okay <laughs> suppose you take away one or two or three or 10 or whatever from 1 trillion is okay, so what is left yeah trillion so it didn't change right so if i go to chitta and i can go look at my experiences forever and i can i really rely upon that and my identification is not with my mind or my body or whatever it is with the chitta that's me actually that's also not you but if you go to that level at least if you identify that level now you are identifying yourself not just with this janma but who you have been forever in all the janmas that's a much better thing isn't it if you can tap into that if you can identify with that now that's hard that's really 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 hard right so when i say mrutyorma amritam gamaya i'm i'm asking krishna i say hey krishna take me to the chitta take me take me back where was i before where was i before that where was i before that all those conclusions all those experiences all the knowledge i gained not just in the last 10 20 50 years but last 500000 years in all the janmas let me identify with that knowledge now that's going to be steady surely because you are integrating for a long long time that is amrita right makes sense so when i say mrutyorma amritam gamiya i'm asking krishna hey it's a multi level you know one step at a time right hey, people say uh, somebody asked me the other day uh, I'll skip that you know you know what aparoksha gnani means aparoksha aparoksha is seeing god with no there is direct contact okay experiencing god directly that's aparoksha gnana somebody who says that you know people talk, it's a word right <laughs> just a word is a is aparoksha gnani ko so whatever that means right <laughs> who knows what that means that's all too high tech right i for, forget about approach approach all those things at least if i can look at my mind man just think a little bit about what kind of energy am i taking somewhere you know i go to somebody's house i talk to somebody it doesn't matter you know we may go have a cup of coffee or whatever you know that's not the point that's really not the point the question is what kind of energy am i bringing to you because it's an offering and say please accept this this is the energy i'm giving to you please take it now whether we know it or not whether we say it or not we are doing it <laughs> we, we, we may not think about that but you are doing that even if you don't like it you are doing that right you are constantly doing that but it's hard to figure out right then you say well okay fine at least my thoughts at least my thoughts T- take it to a level take me my identification to a level where at least i identify with my thoughts not with my body or the energy i don't know i don't i don't know what the heck i'm doing <laughs> is not that i want to take bad energy but who knows right so at least thoughts i can at least i can i'm thinking quote on quote maybe i can at least see what i'm thinking you know like if i if i'm hanging out with you for half a day this is what am i thinking like i can be sitting there talking to you but i can be you know thinking about something else some nasty thoughts you know whatever and outside i'm just saying oh shela how are you and but actually i'm thinking some bad stuff bad negative stuff not bad but something negative right 
at least I can see that I'm doing that. <laughs> right? I, if I look at myself, I'll say, oh crap, you know, why am I doing this? <laughs> I should be thinking positive things towards, you know, some person. Why, why am I thinking, why am I even thinking negative things? Right? At least, but if he can, if he can, he meaning Krishna can take us, my identification. So you're going further and further inside. So if he can take me to my Vijnana my Kosha, where my identification is not, who cares about this? I didn't look like this before. I didn't even think like this before. I didn't even think like this. Because my thinking is shaped by the environment. It's shaped by the times that I live in. It is shaped by the people I'm surrounded by. It's shaped by the place I live in. Right? Did you think like that 10,000 years ago? You couldn't have. You couldn't have because it is a different time. It was, you know, everything was different back then. But you were there. You were thinking about something. <laughs> so if I can tap into all of those things, that definitely is Amruta. We are not done yet. There is one more level. Even that is not permanent. Because you may say, come on man, 1 trillion minus 10 is 1 trillion. I can say, no, it's not. It may look like it's the same, but it's not. It's, it's 10 less. <laughs> Whether it's 10, 1 trillion or 1 zillion, whatever. If 10 less, 10 less, that's all. It's not really constant. It's not really Amruta. But it looks like Amruta. It looks like it's not changing form. But if you go one step further, if we can do that. Then I go to Anandamaya Kosha. That's what it's called. Anandamaya Kosha is the Jiva Swarupa. Jnanananda Swarupa. It is the Pratibimba of the Bimba. It is a reflection of that infinite perfect source. Right? It is a form of light, energy, Jnana and Ananda. Right? Same thing, man. Tamasoma, Jyotirga. We are saying literally the same thing, really. Right? We talked about Tamasoma, Jyotirga, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, whatever. Mruti or Ma, Amrutam Gamiya. Same thing. At the end of the day, what is the only real Amruta in this universe? Something that never, ever, ever changes shape or form in any way. Bhagavanta. <laughs> Nothing else in this. You can look at any jada vastu, material object. You can look at any jiva. We are all finite, we all change. But he never changes. Never ever changes. So in the true sense, if I say Amritam Gamaya, you can say, take me to Sri Krishna. Ultimately. But the thing is, you, you can say that. But the thing is, what about tomorrow morning? I wake up, I am still sitting here. What Shri Krishna? That, I don't know. I have no idea. But at least if I can go step at a step at a time and say Amrutam Gamaya, Amrutam Gamaya, Amrutam Gamaya, let my identification go with my mind. Let my identification initially go with the energy, then with the mind, then with the chitta, with all my experience. And then finally say, let me see, let my identification be with my Swarupa in Jnana. This is what they call Self-Realization. Atma Sakshatkara. Identify, identifying yourself with your true, with the form of the Jiva. That is Jnana Ananda Swarupa. If you can do that, if you can actually, that's a very, very the, you know, people say, oh, do this, do that, and say, oh, because of self-realization. We don't know what the heck that means, right? Just self real These are words, man. You know, people say, can you teach me meditation? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. Or can you teach me this? Can you teach me that? I don't know. Somebody asked me the other day, did you see God? Okay. I, I don't know what that. I don't know what you. I don't know what you mean by when you when you make that statement. I don't know what you mean. I don't know. So I cannot answer that question because I don't know what you mean. 
that even if i say something do you have the experience to know what that means so let's not worry about all the silly things and because these are all silly things and what the heck does it matter what i have done and what you have done man the only thing that matters to me is what i have done the only thing that matters to you is what you have done <laughs> that's it why the heck should it matter you know what i do don't i i've been telling you this so many times why are you know why should anybody worry about what i do it's, it's my I, i do whatever okay that's my problem you know it's not your problem why don't you look at your own thing and see what you're doing right instead of thinking look at everybody oh, what is he doing what is she doing you know <laughs> who cares why don't you look at yourself right that self realization if we can so when i say mrutyorma amritam gameya i can also mean hey krishna give me self realization that is let me see myself i am that actually i am that it's not i'm not asking for something i'm not i i'm actually that i'm i'm the pratibimba of the bimba it's not enough to sing about it in a devanam or something like that okay what does it mean right it's not enough to say man is made in the image of god okay that's all from bible that's all fine but what does it mean if i can realize that if i can see myself as i truly am going beyond even the vignana even going beyond all of this all of these experiences on this infinite number of janmas if i can go beyond that and really see myself as that pratibimba of that bimba and i can see that hey wait i you everybody every single jeeva see we all want to be the people say that oh, we are all equal right in one way we are in one way which is that we are all jnanananda swarupa if that is equality for you oh sure but the capacity is different thing but truly we are all jnanananda swarupa can i really see that can i really identify myself with just pure jnana and ananda so when i say brutyor ma amritam gameya i'm saying hey bhagwan forget about seeing you and all those things let me at least first see myself at least let me see myself first because the shastras say that the only way to really see him is to see through those eyes when in the swarupa in your actual swarupa when you can look at him through that through those eyes of jnana and ananda is the only way you can see him truly and if you really get to now just because there self realization all that you identify with all that <coughs> doesn't mean that you become a paroksha jnani he may still not show himself to you and it happens right so you know what happens sometimes <coughs> people get this with lot of difficulty they 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 you know they do lot of sadhana right janma after janma after janma they learn all kinds of things they they struggle they do all you know with lot of self discipline they do all of that and then they get self realization atma sakshatkar but they don't see bhagavanta so they get confused they get confused and whatever they th- whatever they saw because it's so phenomenal they just saw themselves <laughs> they looked at themselves oh this must be god this must be bhagavanta it leads to that confusion also sometimes but if you really see bhagavanta in that form then you say wow <laughs> that was just me then there is this infinite source right so when we say mrutyor ma amritam gamaya he is just saying take me to my original form if you will my swarupa eventually step at a time eventually take me there and eventually give me maybe for a split second in that swarupa in my swarupa 
let me see you for a second because you are the true amruta you are the true amruta not even me in that form that's the true amruta and eventually some day some day just for a split second let me see you let me get that aparoksha gnana ऐसे मृत्यु और मां अमृतम गमया गोइंग इन इनर 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 एंड कैन यू इमेजिन इफ जस्ट अ सिंपल फैक्ट मैन अ सिंपल फैक्ट इफ आई जस्ट एटलीस्ट इफ इट टेक्स मी टू द प्लेस पगरोपाल दस स्वरूप अगर पाल दस एटलीस्ट इफ आई कैन आइडेंटिफाई विथ माई थॉट्स at least if it takes me to a place where i think that i'm my mind is naked everybody can see with all its faults and defects and everything but everybody can see that i'm going to try to scrub it wash it and keep it clean and right at least take me there <laughs> at least mrutyor mamrutam gumaya and even if you just go there at least part of the time it's going to make such a huge difference in my life right and each one is a prerequisite to the next one you cannot directly jump there you go step by step right so do you know can you imagine we talk about apraksha and all those things right how hard it is to you do the first thing think about it like every day every time you think of something and says man he knows what i'm thinking she knows what i'm thinking she knows he knows if he really if he live like that do you know how hard that would be you'll freak out in 15 minutes <laughs> So seriously, you say, I know exactly what you're thinking. I say, actually, no, 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 I don't want you to. You better not know what you're thinking. Right? You better not. But if I say, no, I'm going to assume that you do. I'm just going to assume that you do. You may know it, you may not know it. I don't even care. Actually, I don't care. Even if you don't know anything, I don't care. I'm going to assume that you know. I want to live my life such that, you know, sometimes what happens is, we think some good things somebody will think bad things they think that they say oh crap it's okay i'm just going to assume that you know that's all i'm going to live my life that such that i think that you know what i'm thinking then most of the time we'll have only good thoughts about other people you'll always have pure thoughts because they know that's my assumption they know So it's only good thoughts. He said, "It doesn't matter what they think. It doesn't matter what they believe. As long as I'm keeping good thoughts, that's all that matters. That's all that matters." So, Mrutyo or Ma Amrutam Gamaya. This is the last of the three things, right? You know, just simple things. You know, we say these things all all the time, right? Asadama Sat Gamaya, whatever. But if we implement it. even if i take just these three lines even if i take one line just take one line and i try to implement that in my life you'll go places you'll really go places right that's my take on the clan krishna parmastha